November 4th, 1993, the Toronto Raptors officially received their NBA franchise. November 3rd, 1995, almost exactly two years to the day later, the Raptors are perfect 1-0. Al Robinson leading the way with 30 points on the game and now has become the answer to a trivia question. Who scored the first points in Toronto Raptor franchise history? It is Sports Center with Jan Dan, brought to you by our friends at Tim Hortons. Gino Retta does not age. No, he looks exactly the same. Great mic technique. He's a professional broadcaster. And we give that tape to many of our young interns to show them exactly how we want them to develop their skills. Uh, what a night it was Thursday in Canada, <laughs> and especially in Toronto. Uh, you had the first off, the first NBA Finals game ever outside the U.S. That's right. So you had the first one in Canada. First time the Canadian anthem was played. That's right. Yeah. So, so many firsts. So many firsts. And for the Raptors, you wondered uh, how would this moment be for them? Would they get caught up in the moment? That's would right. be overwhelming for them? Because, of course, the Golden State Warriors are going for their third straight title here. And they've been here before. They, they know the deal. But Toronto was absolutely fired up inside and outside the building. Raptors did win both meetings against the Warriors in the regular season. Drake wearing the throwback signed Del Curry Raptors jersey. What a move. And Steph's dad apparently loved it. Uh, Steph's dad, Del, spent three seasons with Toronto. The defending champions. Curry contested three and then some words for Drake. Then in transition, Clay Thompson. This is part of an 8-0 Warriors run. Golden State. But it never at any point seemed like the Raptors were not in control of this basketball game. Kyle Lowry. And then Lowry will find the man who had the game of his life. Pascal Siakam drilling one of Toronto's five triples in the opening frame. Raptors were up by four after a quarter. Now early in the second quarter, Fred Van Vliet Sr. Off the steal, Serge Ibaka. Loves roll sun for delicious late night fried rice. The bench combined for 13 points in the first half. Toronto starts to go on a run late in the quarter. Siaka working against Draymond. Gets the friendly roll. Next trip up the floor. Kawhi Leonard gets a go and the blocking foul on Steph Curry. Kawhi just two main shots in the first half, but obviously a huge one there. And then moments later, Curry to Draymond Green. Lowry, incredible at drawing charges. His league best 14th charge, dying seconds. Lowry to Danny Green. Oh, folks excited to see Danny Green hitting shots. 19-8 run to close the half. Raptors up 10 at recess. Kevin Durant missing his sixth straight game. Trying to pump the guys up, heading back to the locker room, but Siakam and the Raps did not let up into the third. Siakam going right at Clay Thompson. He's up to 20 points already. Moments later, Curry, an uncharacteristic poor pass. Leonard to Siakam. He lays it up and in. And then Curry, shots blocked. Raptors are going to take advantage again. It is spicy P. Nine straight shots made for the most improved player candidate. He's feeling it. Toronto getting contributions from Patrick McCall. McCall, the former Warrior. Wraps up seven, head of the fourth. We're off the miss. Lowry heads up pass to Siakam. Patty, what a look. I think back to that Milwaukee series. He made game winning plays at the defensive end. And puts it up and he backs it in over the shoulder to tie his playoff career high with 30. Yeah, 30 points at that point for Siakam. And then Siakam running, going to kick it out to Green. He drills another triple. Part of the 10 1 Raptor run. Draymond tries to respond. Siakam with the block. You get the feeling Siakam didn't like all those Draymond comparisons. To to and then frustration setting in. He didn't like the call. Clay Thompson and he gets the technical the on Danny Green. Drake has a really expensive watch. Final minute, Lowry the dagger. The Raptors win game one of the NBA Finals.
And by the way, the winner of game one of the finals is 51 and 21 all time. So I guess that seals it. The Raptors are winning the title. The Raptors have won all three meetings this season, and they are 19-0 all-time, went up seven-plus points heading into the fourth quarter at home in the postseason. Who else could you talk to afterward? you got to talk to Pascal Siakam on the team's defensive effort against the champs. we got guys that are just willing to, to move and play defense, and, you know, we use it to our advantage, you know. Um, and, and I think, you know, we're doing a pretty decent job. There's, there's some possession there. We made some mistakes, but, you know, for the most part, we, we play solid. It's a great team we're playing against. Um, it's going to be tough. We just got to continue to play, be, be ourselves, and they're going to make adjustments. And we got to be ready for that. Yeah, Pascal Siakam was the story of game one, a playoff career high 32 points. Most amazing thing, look at that, 14 for 17 from the field, eight rebounds, five assists. What a game for spicy people. Now the, the entire country can exhale for a second because that first one, okay, it's now been completed and mission accomplished for the Raptors. But at watching it, did you feel at any point that the Raptors were not in the game? They never, it seemed like they were just a veteran NBA Finals team playing their sixth finals. I don't, and then, you, but you're always watching the Warriors like, oh, they're going to go on a run. They're going to go on a run. The never. shots Steph was making were terrifying, mm -hmm. quite frankly, if you're a Raptor fan. He's making shots that no human should be able to make. And the trash talk between uh, Drake and Draymond Green has started. He supposedly called him trash. Oh. After the game. That's not, that doesn't seem right, but I did love the Del Curry jersey. Uh, it's time to send it to our good friend that we affectionately call around here at TSN, Jimmy Buckets. <laughs> Thank you, boys. First of all, Chris Bosch is a big fan of your beards. I have also been trying to grow a beard since the beginning of the NBA playoffs. I have not shaved. It's coming along very, very nicely. Uh, Chris, first of all, he's very uh, he's worried about this graphic that we keep showing. It says 71% of the teams that win game one go on to win the finals. And he keeps yelling at the screen going, no, no, why? You don't First of all, let me tell you something. I've lost games one, three, and five, which is a cardinal sin in the playoffs, <laughs> especially the finals. Game one, Toronto, you've done what you're supposed to do. You came here to get two games. You have to defend home court. You're the best home court team left in the playoffs right now. The man they, knows. Yeah, they've got to make sure they close it out and make sure that they know that Golden State has come here to get at least one game. So they're going to come much better next game. You speak of confidence. Danny Green struggled so much, particularly from beyond the arc in the last series. And he sat beside us yesterday and said, I'm sick of everybody asking me about my shot. I'm trying to forget about it. But he also said that he knew that if he made one or made a couple, that this building would erupt. And you could feel it. Three for seven tonight, yeah. a big difference maker in this game. Huge difference maker. And remember, he's got the NBA Finals record for most threes in a series, right? I think he does. So if he's able to shake loose, get some open shots, hit some timely threes, play phenomenal defense, get some second chance opportunities like he did tonight through offensive rebounds, those are the things that he's going to bring to this team that's going to be very valuable. I think we have a question from our live studio audience. It's uh, This one's from Jay and Dan in Scarborough. Go ahead, gentlemen. Yeah, James, we were wondering, what are those uh, pins that uh, Chris has on his uh, suit oh, jacket? That's Bob Ross. That's Bob Ross right there. That's you what like? We thought. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know Bob. Yo, come on, guys. You know Bob Ross. What's we, the other one? You, you know Payne. Oh, that's just a Bob Ross tree. That's a nice little... <laughs> That's a nice, pretty little tree, just right there, sitting in the, in, the, in the corner right there. Would I be able to pull off the Bob Ross pin? Absolutely. Those are happy mistakes, man. That's what they call happy mistakes. If you know Bob Ross, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is yeah. that so? Is that why you wear it, Chris? Like, why, what, why the Bob Ross pins? Because I love his fro. Okay. Yeah, okay. the best fro I've ever seen no, no, in the no. world. No, no, no. Wonderful Mons, uh, <laughs> CFL player from back in the day. That was the best afro. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Appreciate it. A happy mistake. That describes our show. Every night. <laughs> uh, you can see game two of the NBA final where? Oh, it's on TSN. Sunday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. And following the show, we are hosting the post-game show. It's our big break. Join us, won't you? Pascal Siakam, playoff career high, 32 joy. points at eight rebounds, led the Raptors to a 118-109 win over the two-time defending champion Golden State Warriors as 
the Toronto Raptors take a 1-0 lead, and I, I haven't got used to saying this yet, in the NBA Finals. It does seem strange, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, uh, this walkover clock is sponsored by Drake's Reflexology and Shoulder Massages. That's right. He does like to uh, give rub downs. Nick Nurse said he's got the soft, soft hands. Soft hands? That's fair. I'll take it. Uh, Dan, the contributions from the Toronto Raptors came from many, many sources yep. in game one. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Take a look at this. Five Raptors scoring in double digits and points, led, of course, by Pascal Siakam, who had 32 points, a career playoff high. In fact, Siakam made 11 straight field goals, longest streak in any finals game over the past 20 seasons. <laughs> Marcus Hall with 20 most he's had this postseason. Danny Green. You mentioned it, Dan. Everyone was waiting for him to break out. 11 points. Most he's had in a playoff game since game five against the Sixers in the second round. We can almost have a professional team if Chris Bosh came out of retirement. <laughs> we could. Cabby comes off the bench. Kate Burness is starting point guard. Kate might be the best player on that team. <laughs> um, as uh, Cavi mentioned, first time in the last five finals, the Warriors have failed to win game one. In fact, it was only the second time in 20 all-time game ones under Steve Kerr that the Warriors lost. Mark Gasol, as we mentioned, 20 points defensively, incredible. And he talked after game one about the Raptors' plan to shut down the Warriors' defensive plan. If you watch the previous series against Portland, they, you know, they did that with a... Uh, um, uh, Damian Lillard and, uh, and CJ, so you know, we assumed that there was a chance that we were going to play as Kawhi. Um, so we were, you know, understanding the spacing that we were going to have and what kind of shots were going to be open, uh, what kind of rotations they were going to do. Um, now, you know, we uh, we got to still improve in some areas and spacing and moving out of that. Um, but uh, overall, we, I thought we did a, a decent job. Uh, you know, I thought that uh, the guys did a good job of finding me in the post, uh, the, you know, the two or three times that uh, I went down there, and, um, and it went well. By the way. Love that guy. How happy, no offense to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> how happy are the Warriors that they get to not have to go to Cleveland? No, they, we've been talking about this. There is a, um, a palpable relief among the Warriors players leading up to this game that they have different restaurants to go to. <laughs> That's right. uh, different choices to make in terms of uh, nightlife. Not that they're gonna go out and hit the clubs that much. Maybe in Toronto. Maybe they will. Maybe that's what they want to do in Toronto. Maybe that's, that helped the Raptors in game one. I don't know. And because it's in Canada, they get Timmy's. That's right. Because it's in Canada, they get Timmy's. I bet you Steph Curry, every time he comes back, is like the familiar taste of Tim Hortons. Timmy's right? and, He remembers uh, it when he was a kid. And fuzzy peaches. What? Is he drinking double-doubles as a kid? Probably. Okay. I know my kids are going to. <laughs> uh, hey, guess what? There's other things going on in sports. Yes. Blues forward Oscar Sundquist given a one-game suspension for this hit on Bruins defenseman Matt Grizzlick Wednesday night. Boston coach Bruce Cassidy says Grizzlick is day-to-day. -day. He was placed in concussion protocol, and he did not travel with the Bruins to St. Louis. Bergeron called Sundquist. That guy. Yeah, that so, guy coming in. Well, that guy, he delivers a concussion, and you might remember at the start of the season, he missed eight games due to a concussion. A, a vicious hit from Tom Wilson. I think it was yeah. in the preseason. Um, so, yeah. Um, but it's funny because his line, Sunquist's line, has played big minutes against the top Bruins line, the, the Pasternak line. So, uh, yeah. They need Actually, to, a big loss for, they need for to wrap Louis. this series up because this beard's grown into my nose. Getting and it's, itchy. No, it's yeah. growing up into it. Leafs GM Kyle Dubas is in Buffalo ahead of the draft combine that begins on Friday. Questions surrounding Mitch Marner set to become a restricted free agent on July the 1st. Classic salesman, hey, this guy, bargain. But Bob pointed it out in his Twitter thread, which is extensive and you should yep. check it out. Um, he very well could just be back because the Leafs need defensemen. Jake Gardner is probably going to be gone. Travis Dermott had surgery. He'll basically be gone a bu bunch of the season. They need defensemen, and they really need Zaitsev. And I don't know who's going to take that contract on. And then there's going to be the speculation as to why he actually... And exactly, it. exactly. So uh, we'll continue to follow that. But when we come back, of course the Raptors are getting a Janney.
It's the best and worst from Thursday on SportsCenter with Jay and Dan, presented by Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons drive through time, the best of Thursday in the world of sports. And of course, the Toronto Raptors beat the Golden State Warriors 118-109 to win game one of the NBA Finals. Five Raptors scoring in double figures. Pascal Siakam, a playoff career high, 32 points. It is the first game one loss for G-State in the Steve Kerr era. Kawhi, 23 points, eight rebounds, five assists. Pulls them to sleep. They were double teaming them for the entire first half. Game two Sunday in Toronto on TSN. And before the game, people waiting in line since 6 a.m. to enter Jurassic Park and Maple Leaf Square. Other viewing parties in the GTA. Around 20,000 people in Celebration Square in Mississauga. Ah! Uh, Civic Square in Burlington. Brampton's Garden Square. That's where producer Tim was born. <laughs> hey, guess what else was going on in Toronto Thursday? The Argos were. Yeah, the Argos. And they went old school, playing their exhibition opener in the heart of Toronto, Varsity Stadium, a place they called home for 42 years. And look, they're wearing uh, We the North patches. They're facing the Alouettes. James Franklin's going to be the Argos' starting quarterback. They're beginning life without Ricky Ray. It's pressure, deep ball for Jimmy Ralph. Who's the Leafs' color guy? <laughs> Touchdown. Franklin with 3 4 70 passing yards. Throughout Walker, highest paid non QB in the CFL. Wide open in the end zone and hauls it in. Varsity is such a great location. Uh, like, I'd love them to play there the whole time. You can just wander up and watch a game for free. I don't think they want that. No, that'd be a way to. There's, like, there's a way into the stadium. <laughs> That's Michael O'Connor becoming the second highest QB taken in the draft since 92. I gets his first touchdown pass. He's a UBC guy. Janny time, best and worst from Thursday. Raptors moving the ball quickly after a Golden State bucket. And yes, Kawhi off the glass. Marcus Saul, Kyle Lowry, Spicy P, Kawhi. That's how, you, that's how you win game one. You'll get a better view of Varsity Stadium here uh, because Rodney Smith, 79-yard touchdown catch. He throws the ball on the Bloor Street. Yeah. <laughs> now, a guy, someone just walking by, like, uh, I guess this is my <laughs> ball now. Maybe he threw it back. Wait, can we see? No, he's on a phone call. He's got a phone There's call a to make there. Uh, Kevin Newman, W5 anchor and a part-time Major League infielder, the flip to second for the Force. Cards and Phillies, two outs in the ninth. Andrew McCutcheon slashes one into right. Dexter Fowler. How great are those Phillies, Mike Schmidt era throwbacks? Very cool. They are things of beauty. Cricket World Cup, watch England's Ben Stokes. Whoa! Still don't understand why they don't give him baseball gloves out there, but I guess that's cricket, and it's against the rules. French Open, Andrea Petkovic puts away the smash, and after the point, Sue Shea will pretend to answer a spectator's phone. Petkovic can't believe that ball actually went in. Look at that, Shea getting on the phone. And the script spelling bee, the final eight competitors spelled the final 47 words correctly. So they all completed the 20 round competition and were all named co champs. All eight champs get their own trophy and they all get 50,000 bucks. Wow, that's fantastic. The script spelling bee is bankrupt. <laughs> they can't afford that. Scripts is done. They're not going to be sponsoring the spelling bee next year. You know who might? Tim Hortons. <laughs> Spelling Bee is very compelling. It was on TSN2 on Thursday night. That's right. Our Tim Hortons Executive of the Month is Gary Fung. <laughs> Gary's a fitness buff and an all-around great guy. Thank you, Gary, for being you.
Kawhi Leonard, Dan, back in the NBA Finals uh, since winning Finals MVP back in 2014. Helped uh, lead the Raptors to that 118-109 win over the Warriors. Uh, 23 points, uh, 8 rebounds, mm -hmm. 5 assists. Uh, the Raptors have won 5 straight games. Uh, longest postseason win streak in franchise history. And the thing is, he was double teamed for the entire game, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. It's a tough catch. Uh, the Warriors also committed six more turnovers than Toronto in this one. Toronto had six blocks as well compared to G State's two. Uh, never in doubt, I don't think. At least that's what we thought. And Jack and Leo agreed with us. They said there was never a point in which this game was in doubt for the Raptors. Um, and this, by the way, the first NBA Finals since 2010 that does not have a LeBron James in it. Game two of the NBA Finals is here on TSN Sunday. And Dan and I will host the post-game show right afterward. It is going to be epic and probably the most exciting moment of our lives. You thought we were done with the wraps? Wait till you see our top ten. It is the best moments in Toronto Raptors history. Rod Black's mustache will make an appearance. So many great moments in the history of the Toronto Raptors franchise, it's difficult to select only 10 of them, and it's difficult to believe that this moment from Game 1 of the NBA Finals Thursday night did not make the list. Pascal triggers a three. Got it from Regina. Regina. Get ready, everybody. First Raptor game, Broad Black. Wait for it. Right. Boom! Mustache! <laughs> what the? the? The Raptor was born out of a dino egg. <laughs> and they beat the Nets in front of 30,000 fans. Rod later shaved his mustache. March 2018, DeMar DeRozan against the Pistons, coast to coast. Man, that was huge. Remember when Chuck Swirsky was uh, the Raptors play-by-play -play man? Oh yeah, big time. Very entertaining. He was on the call for number eight, March the 30th, 2007. Michael Ruffin, he thought the game was over, kind of threw the ball in the air. Mo Pete catches it. It scores the game-winning basket. It was, uh, wow. it was crazy. It was miraculous. November 2002, Vince Carter over Tim Duncan. Yeah, you're going to be seeing a bit of Vince Carter in this top ten. At number six, East Semis 2015, Kyle Lowry, three of his 35 points. Raptors advance to the Eastern Conference Final for the first time in franchise history. At the time, this was the most successful season in Raptors franchise history. Number five is from this year, Game 6, East Finals against the Bucs. Lowry steals, finds Kawhi. Kawhi! Over the Greek Freak. May 4th, 2001, Raps Knicks, a deciding game five, Madison Square Garden, just the second playoff appearance in franchise history. Alvin Williams gets the ball, nails the shot, and seals the first series win for the Toronto Raptors. March 24th, 1995, Damon Stoudemire had 30 points, and they beat Michael Jordan's 72 in Chicago Bulls by one point. I was at this game, Dan. You know who missed the game winner? Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr, Warriors coach. Well, he wasn't coaching the Warriors at that time. He was playing for the That Bulls. would have been pretty cool, though, if he was playing for the Bulls and coaching the Warriors. Climax of the night. We're going to see what Vince Carter can really do. Here is Vince Carter with his first stop. Let's go home. Let's go home, ladies and gentlemen. I've never seen that before. Half man, half amazing. Vince Carter. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to 
hang there, and I want to go to the utmost level that people can't get there. He's got the swagger. He's got it all. Kawhi up top. Looks at the clock. Turns the corner for the win. the biggest shot made in Canadian basketball history, and Kawhi Leonard's name is attached to it. So, so the <laughs> moments are getting a bit better. See, his number two was from a slam dunk contest. Yeah. Joel Embiid was really crying there. He was. Highlight of the night. Cricket World Cup. Ben Stokes go of England, full oh, extension. No way. That was a necessary no way. dive. Cannot do that, ben Stokes. That is remarkable. And he did it that without a glove. You cannot do that, Ben Stokes. Uh, you blew what we pointed out our errors. You said Kevin Newman made the flip with the glove. It was Brewer shortstop Orlando Arcia. Uh, you blew it. Mo Pete tied the game with that miraculous shot. They won it in overtime. And I blew it. The Raptors beat Jordan 96, not 95. Very quickly, we have an Are They Related. From yesterday, I showed a stand-up uh, of me from 2005 at the NBA Finals, and Chobi Liang, a viewer from Toronto, uh, pointed out that <laughs> at the time, I looked very familiar to the gritting teeth emoji. Yeah. I love that emoji. That's my favorite emoji. I love sending that emoji. I, I do send that a lot, too. That's a good it's all-encompassing. See you on Sunday. Hey, Kwai, Dan O'Toole, TSN. Uh, wondering how much of your motivation uh, in a, during a game at a, at a highlight uh, featured. Uh, this time, Sanchez suffered a right middle finger nail avulsion. By the way, do not Google image finger nail avulsion. It's when the nail gets torn away from the nail bed. Okay, so let's see how it goes. Go on. Hey, Quad, Dan O'Toole, TSN. We're still at the back. Uh, wondering how much motivation to get a highlight in our popular segment, and that made no sense. <laughs> Dan O'Toole, TSN. Uh, wondering how much motivation is it for you during a game to get a highlight on our featured segment, The James? <laughs>